Hello everyone, how are you? How are you? This is a special edition of the Tear and Lamp Show. This is episode number 90, I believe. Wowzers, episode number 90 of the Tear and Lamp Show. This is a special edition. We are here, of course, um, this is Sunday. So Sunday at uh, 11.30 p.m., 11.30 a.m., sorry, Central Standard Time. My guest today is dialing in from Berlin. So it is 6.30 p.m. Berlin time today. And thank you so much for joining me again. This is the Taryn Lamb Show. We are normally here on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure if you are joining us that you are liking, following, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff. We are on Apple Podcasts and on YouTube as well. So again, thank you so much for joining me. Let me get my guest in here. Norhan, let me get you in here. So I hit invite. I hope that works. Hope you saw that. Um, this is the Taryn Lip. Hello. Hi. Uh -oh. Hi. I think you're sideways. Uh, I should shift the camera. Yeah. Like this. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, beautiful? How are you, Norhan? How are you? Um, all good. How are you? Good. 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 How are you having a a blessed Ramadan? Yeah, it's it's always calming and charging. <laughs> And I know, I know you said you're, uh, you're close here. So we, we, we will have you out on time. You, we will have <laughs> you out on time. So how are you? Tell us where you are. Tell us, I, said, I said Berlin, but tell us a little bit about your story. Give us your journey. You look so beautiful. You look so Thank you. beautiful. Give us a little bit about you. Uh, okay, I'm currently in uh, Berlin. Uh, you want me to start from the beginning, right? Yeah, tell us, yeah, tell us what you want to know. <laughs> okay, so I'm an Egyptian Muslim girl, uh, born and raised in Egypt. Um, and um, uh, I studied the pharmaceutical sciences in my bachelor in a public university. Um, and then I joined like a couple of companies working in the pharmaceutical field. And then I felt like I'm um, not happy doing what I'm doing. I reached a very good position in no time. I was getting promoted, getting paid very good, managing multiple countries, but I'm not happy. And the only thing that made me happy was volunteering. The thing that I started when I was back in school, uh, when the 2011 revolution started, it was so enlightening and I started volunteering. So after those couple of years, I felt like, okay, this is not my passion. So let's just leave everything and just go pursue my passion. So I started working for like two years as a teacher. And th those were like the best two years in my life, mm -hmm. teaching little children. And it was very good. It was, uh, I was doing what I love, but I felt like I'm so obsessed with extending my impact and increasing it. And I want to reach more people, help more people. This is, this is what I find myself in. So I started doing this. I, I joined a nonprofit organization. Uh, I, I usually work, uh, that's what I do, education. I work as an instructional designer, designer and gamification uh, expert. Um, I joined a nonprofit organization. It was great. Uh, I spent there a couple of years and then I felt like, okay, Egypt has a long way to go, but there are many resources there, many people with passion and great potential, but okay, maybe we need to do something regarding managing the resources. It's, it's all about the management. Um, so I wanted to go for a master's degree in uh, development studies or public administration. Uh, I couldn't afford it, of course. So I searched for um, a fellowship or a scholarship, something to help me. I applied for many ones and I got rejected a lot. Mm. <laughs> and finally, I got one at the American University in Cairo, um, full scholarship. Uh, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm currently in my fourth semester. Uh, that's here in Berlin. It's an exchange semester. Mm -hmm. Uh, this this part of the journey has been um, amazing. It's well, someone, changed a lot. Someone's saying, I love you. Yeah, that's my uncle. <laughs> hey, uncle. He loves you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I 
I love you too, uncle. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, okay, so I'm currently in Berlin doing this exchange semester and it's been like a roller coaster since I started the master's and getting here. Uh, it wasn't hard at all. It was, I mean, it wasn't easy at all. It was <laughs> very hard. Um, but actually, it was, uh, it changed a lot in my mind. And I believe it was, it nourished my soul a lot. The, the, the opportunity that I got, the fact that I got rejected a lot, the, the points where I got frustrated, the challenges that I had when I made the career shift from being a pharmacist and having a stable career. Now it's been five years with my career. Not, it's a bit. It's not stable. Yeah. People are just asking me about it a lot. Tell me, tell me about that because I know when we first started talking, that was one of the things we talked about, you know, and you said it in the beginning, like you had this career that, you know, seemingly paid you well, and doing yeah. well, all that good stuff, but it wasn't your, your passion, right? It, yes. and so tell me about the, the obstacles that came along. What were those obstacles in that transition? Because I'm assuming that you had, you know, your own thoughts, but then I'm assuming people also were like, are you sure you want to do this? You know, are you sure you want to make this transition? So tell me a little bit about the obstacles that were going through your mind at the time when you wanted to transition out, even though you knew where your heart was. You, you know, my father still asks me if I want to go back to being a pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it will give you an idea of what's happening. <laughs> well, I think the the biggest challenge was that I'm I'm um, I'm financially independent. Mm -hmm. um, I started doing this like, since I started working, so I felt like I, I I cannot go back and ask my family to provide for me. I need to keep doing this, and of course, the salary of a pharmacist is like way too high when you compare it to a salary of a teacher. I think this is something we have all over the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is this was one of the big challenges. Um, that's why I had my plan was to shift to another job and try to manage my finances around the new salary. And the second thing was about people, of course. Uh, my friends were supportive, but my family at first they were not, of course. They are still questioning my decision. <laughs> I'm well, not talking. Here. Uncle says he's <laughs> proud of you, so there you go. He is, of course, but I'm talking about my mother and father. They're, they're still questioning my my decision. Sometimes I do question it, uh, of course, because it's not easy. I, I do have a lot of obstacles in the way. Um, of course, the frustrations of um, of trying to find the place in, in this new field to me. I had no experience in the development field. It was only volunteering. I had no uh, professional experience. I had to, uh, as if I was, uh, I had five years experience in the pharmaceutical career and I just take, I just throw it all away and I started as a junior. I think a new thing. So it wasn't easy at all. Too many obstacles. Mm -hmm. Did you find it like, even though it wasn't easy, did you find it where you said, you know, I must keep going and you never really wanted to go back? Or did you think to yourself, oh man, maybe I, sh maybe I should go back. Um, someone says, I'm still struggling like you, Norhan, shifting, finding my career. So, you know, like I, like I was saying, like there is a lot of people that can relate to you there. Did you find like at every point that you were like, oh, I don't know, you know, I'm gonna go back. Or did you just always know, like I'm gonna keep going forward no matter, no matter what? Um, most of the time, I know that this is what I want. Mm -hmm. um, this is my passion, and it's it's very rewarding to my soul. Um, yeah, but of, it's it's not like uh, black and white. Of course, yeah. Lots of times I question the decision. I'm here in Berlin alone, and uh, I'm struggling with homesickness. I'm struggling with the loneliness. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do question my 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 decision. Even when I'm here, when I'm doing something that I, I fought for for a lot of time. Uh, but actually, it's about the, um, the reward that is coming out of it. It's when I submit an assignment in my, in my master's and I get good feedback. That I feel like I'm on the right track. Yeah. And I got accepted for this exchange semester and I, there were many people applying and I was chosen. When I got chosen for the fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, when I do any achievement in, in, in my work or because I like helping people when I when I see someone that I'm helping and I see the impact of what I'm doing this is rewarding so yeah. so this is why I'm, I'm, I'm going forward 
I st- I'm still struggling financially, of course. Mm-hmm. But I, I, what I learned is that my mental well-being and that um, I feel like what I'm doing is um, nourishing my soul. This is, that's why I'm going. I'm going yeah. forward. I'm not stopping. And that always feels good. Someone says, they, I miss you, Nori. I'm, Nori, I miss you. <laughs> they call you Nori? Yes. <laughs> my, my name is a bit long, so people just try, they find many nicknames for me. <laughs> so, anything a, with an N, I'm okay with it. <laughs> that, that's great. Um, yeah, I can imagine, you know, like you said, you're there alone. You were making, I remember when you were kind of making the decision, you know, to go or stay, and you kind of, you know, you took that leap of faith, right? And you said, I'm going to do this because it's a passion that, you know, you, you're, you're, you're in gold. You see the rainbow out there, you know, and you're like, I yeah. don't want to go back. And I think that's so admirable because that's tough. It's tough. It's very, very <laughs> and it's tough. Also, you know, we're still in, it's tough as, as female, as a female, I can imagine that, you know, that's a tough, a, a tough call to make. You know, did you find that is as a specific part of your obstacle or you didn't really think about that? Like just as a woman? Of course it is. Yeah. Uh, as a woman, we, I, I love for feeling safe and mm-hmm. being around my family and I'm so attached to them. And it's not easy for a woman and a, and a hijabi to, uh, to go through all this and, and start applying for, um, for, uh, for a scholarship or like a semester abroad uh, and living on her own. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. You know, it, it's, it's about, um, of course, it's every, anyone could feel um, that he's lonely and he could feel that they need their support system. Uh, but maybe for me, um, because I was more attached to my family, I, I, I miss them more and I'm struggling more than this. And, um, and especially in those situations where I'm, 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 I'm single, I'm a single woman on my own, I'm leaving in the, it was like I was applying where the COVID, there was a, a wave in Egypt and it wasn't easy to go through all the restrictions. And, but I, I have a good support system within having my friends around and having my family. They do question me, but they are supporting my decisions <laughs> after all. <laughs> so, now, so, now, on the other side yeah. of that, I'm also assuming you're, you're building your own community now, you know, doing what you're doing right you're building this community around your new passion and around you know you meeting people there where you are in berlin can you tell us a little bit about building your your new if you will community around the teaching and around you know your new colleagues and friends that you're making now because i'm assuming that you know you you really shifted industries if you will um, when you shifted passion so now you have a new community can you tell us a little bit about that I actually have like, um, if I could say a mix between two communities, I'm trying to mix to be one. <laughs> like those people interested in education and gamification, and those people interested in public administration. Mm, okay. Uh, because this is this this is the um, the major of my masters. Um, I'm actually here. It's 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 very different because I'm meeting um, diverse people. They are so different from my background and they're coming from different countries, different cultures. And it's amazing how people are very accepting for who I am, for, mm-hmm. uh, for my cultural background and, um, for, um, and they're trying to support me. Um, I'm, I'm, I learned a lot from others. Uh, like I, 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 I met a lot of people who are studying public administration and public policy and they, are, they have the education background and we're trying to mix things together. So I felt like, okay, I'm not alone. <laughs> Other people are doing this. And actually it's, it's amazing how having a goal, a common goal and a common passion, yeah. uh, making people meet. Yeah. So whenever I need something, I, I know that I will call this person and we can go meet up and plan for something together. Uh, I'm, I'm having trouble with this. So there, someone will help me and it's, it goes, uh, both ways someone um, I, I, someone is saying i'm so proud of you sweetheart you're my daughter's ideal keep um keep months good maybe keep up the good work uh good job because new beginning never ends 
I love that. That's my that's my uncle's wife. Hi. <laughs> I love because it's new time of year. <laughs> beginnings never end. Good beginnings never end. I like that saying. I like that. I might take that from her. She's, a, she's very supportive. <laughs> yes, yes. She says she's so proud of you. I love good beginnings never ends. I like that. So, but that's true, right? Like, so do you feel like you're kind of always at a new beginning? A good beginning? I do. I, I felt like um, I, it would end by starting, by shifting my career, but actually joining a new place, starting my master's and mm -hmm. starting my semester abroad, it's, it's always new. Yeah. And getting to know new people, it's, it's like adding more to the experience. Yeah, and, and, and good beginnings. So uh, let me clarify what she says. Good beginnings never end. And, and I think that's true too, right? Good beginnings. Mm -hmm. and, and you're always kind of in, you seem to be kind of in that always, you're, um, I don't know if you're always in the learning phase, but you're always in the open phase to be learning. I, I actually was thinking about that in the morning. I felt <laughs> like when you sent me the question about uh, what's, what's, what's the next step. Yeah, go ahead. I felt like, I am in the learning phase. I don't know what, I cannot tell you that I will do this on my next step. I feel like, no, I'm in the learning phase currently. I'm open to learn. And maybe if uh, I, I would go back to, to having uh, to my career, I, uh, currently I'm just a student. I need to go back and have my job because I feel like I need to feel like I'm giving back to people that I, mm -hmm. th this is my passion. This is what feeds my soul. But it is still a learning phase going back to work or maybe going for a PhD or something after I'm done with my master's, hopefully next semester. <laughs> but it, I'm still open to learn. It's, I'm learning on every step of the way, learning from the people, learning even from doing the paperwork and dealing with the German bureaucracy, uh, learning or uh, getting using the German transportation. It's always new learning. And I'm actually enjoying this. I'm enjoying being a student. I enjoy learning and enjoy Con conveying this knowledge to others do you um yeah that's what i was gonna say so you feel like you're paying it forward kind of thing like you're learning and then you can share to the next person in your same footsteps right this is my passion yeah. whenever i feel like someone well, needs that's help i a great teacher that's what makes you a great teacher right it's, thank you <laughs> yeah it's like well no you're sharing right like you are open to so many things and I think it takes someone to be open to, like you said, like different. I mean, to, for, first of all, let's just start that you move from, um, you know, two different places, two different countries, you know what I mean, to pursue your education. That's the big, like I said, that's huge in itself. That's a big leap of faith. And then you switched in, well, before that, you had switched industries. So I think, uh, what do they say? The best teachers are constant learners, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. constant learning and constant change you've had to adapt to so many different things in such a short amount of time because you did a lot of this during the COVID times yes <laughs> you know, I remember you applying and things or you were you were at you know maybe at the last end of applying and thinking what am I going to do how am I going to get there the timing you know I, I, I was at, when I was applying for my visa I was so uh, worried that Germany would actually have another lockdown so I won't be even, even be able to get in <laughs> Uh, yeah, I remember. I remember you saying, "Oh, this is it's it's um I don't know if I want to use the word stressful, but it was a lot." <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was a lot. So, I can't so believe it passed. <laughs> what do you think? What are some of the things like, you know, I know you mentioned um PhD and forward. What do you think what does the future look like? Like what would you if, you know, like it to look like for you? Uh as I told you it's very tricky uh and uh, I'm I'm Currently, I'm in that learning phase. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm, I was thinking, I'm enjoying uh, being a student, that I would go for a PhD, but I'm, I just need to maybe a break to go back to uh, working as a professional in, in the education field a bit, because I, I need to apply what I learned yeah. during my master's. Uh, but what I know is that I need to go in a new place where I can learn, uh, a new place with a new culture where I can apply what I learned and learn more, like exchange uh, my experience. Um, and that's really what, what changed in me. Like this, this learning phase, especially uh, since I started my master's degree, 
it's been um, life changing. Ah. Like it, this is the only word that can just describe it. Being in a new community like the AUC, I've been all my life in the public education system in Egypt. So it, I was so worried when I started going for um, a new system, the American system, and how it would look like, how it would perform. I'm an achiever, I'm an, an academic achiever all, all, all over my life. So I cannot be behind. Yeah. And just You're changing this. You're over I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that, that obvious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I think you're an overachiever. <laughs> And now in, in Europe, it's different. It's a different system. And I have to cope. And with all the stress, with living alone and doing everything on my own and the language barrier and the German bureaucracy and those things, I, I need to share this with other people, mm -hmm. those changes that I, I've been through. And, and, and I need to learn a lot from others who's, who's been back at home uh, working and dealing with the new inflation and the things that, that are being are being happened and implemented during the last period. Yeah, I mean, I think um, a couple of people are joining in. This is the Taryn Lamb Show, by the way. We are episode number 90. We are here with my, isn't she, like, I put on that thing, I put gorgeous, because you are absolutely gorgeous. And wherever Thank you, you so have blue backgrounds, wherever you were, when you, the, whatever, you know what I'm talking about? The one, the picture you sent? Ah, uh, the one, yes. Oh. The, last, the last one you, you just, uh, you just it posted. Yes. Where were you? In Berlin. Uh, you, know, you know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, we don't have lots of sun here. So when, when I had some sun here, I just went out and took some pictures. Oh man, that picture was gorgeous. I know, right? She's <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. I agree. Thank you. There, I like that comment. I was like stunning. So yeah, I don't even know what I was saying. We were talking about how, how gorgeous you were. I forgot what I was even going to ask. <laughs> but, but I think, you know, to your point, it's a lot of change for you. And you've yeah. kind of taken it head on. And I can, like, oh, I was thinking something about, oh, I can relate to what you were saying about, you know, you kind of are like me and that we kind of like to know what's happening and kind of where we're going. And when you have those, you know, uncertainties, right? You're like, we are achievers and we like to know that we're going to achieve. And when there's something on the other end that we're not sure about, you know, we're like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen, right? Mm, and, yes. and I'm sure for you, this whole process, it, it continues to be such that feeling. Right, like what's on the other side of of all this? You know, even though you can kind of create it on your own, you're in a literally in a physical place where you're not sh sure. You know, it, it it's like I've become an um, an addict to this adrenaline rush of having the uncertainties and the stress. I, I get so stress stressed out. By the way, I'm I'm not that uh, strong person that I have. Uh, a resilient mental well-being i'm struggling with my mental well-being i'm struggling with my stress but it's always worth it um it's like it's, it's always uh, rewarding when mm -hmm. when i go there and i go through the challenge i like the ch i like challenges i i get bored from having a stagnant life <laughs> so yeah so the challenge was very beneficial to me i know but it's sometimes i i think it's like it's like a uh two thing two sides like we like them but then we're like oh my goodness but then they can be stressful at the same time you know you're like i love it but it's stressful i'm looking at all your comments you're getting all these hearts and star faces and love <laughs> someone says go go on i know right like keep telling us more about it because i just think that as a woman as a shifter as an achiever there's so many things on your shoulders. Yeah. You know, there's, but I think you love them all. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, 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 of course, I, I'm struggling within the process, of course. <laughs> Let me say the truth. I'm struggling within the process. But, but you love it. It's like, worth it. Like, like you wouldn't be doing anything else. I, I can't live without it. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, actually. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I think when people look at you, and I like that you also said, you know, I think that you are a little vulnerable there when you're like, you know, I'm not that strong person maybe that everybody thinks I am, you know? Yes. 
that's fair, right? And in, in, in this world we are living in today and, and to make that transition, you know, not being okay with saying, you know, I'm, I'm not that strong person that everybody thinks I am. I'm handling, I'm handling these things, but I'm not necessarily, you know, what people, you know, think that I am. Okay, so there's a saying. Let me, let me just tell you that, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting, yeah. but during this journey, uh, the one of the most vali valuable things that I learned is to say say that uh, I am vulnerable and I need help, mm -hmm. ask for help. Because before this, I used to like, I'm, I'm a strong, independent woman and I can do everything on my own and I do not need anyone to help me and I can, um, I can like win everything and things like that. But during this journey, I learned that, no, I am vulnerable. I have, I have my weak points and I, I need to have to go back to my support system and ask them for help. Um, I actually was talking to a friend about that yesterday and I was thanking him for, for being there for me. Yeah. It's a very important thing that I've learned that I, I would like to share with others that it's okay to, to ask for help. It's, it's okay. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't mean like you're not strong. I am, I am strong, but I have my weak points and I need people to help me, to support me in those points. So we need people like Norhan because a lot of us are having the same struggles and need someone to let us know it's okay. We're in this together. We, we're together in this. How do you say, do you see the name? Is it? Sh see the name of Saruk? Saruk? Saruk, yes. Saruk, okay. I just want to make sure I was saying it right. Says that. <laughs> yes. Someone says, oh, uncle. I know the uncle. Uncle, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uncle he says our family strong independent women so it sounds like you come from a group of them yes i do my my mother is and my grandmother <laughs> both they are very strong women so you they did, are my idols you got you got that honestly as they say right he's yeah, you're it's in my kind of saying, <laughs> guys around your family a lot of strong independent women <laughs> yes <laughs> leave it to the uncle right to tell everybody huh <laughs> he has a lot of secrets <laughs> yeah and i like that um Sharuk says you, you know we need someone like you to tell everybody that it is okay because i think that's like a misconception right is that you're getting having all these you know wonderful accomplishments which are wonderful um but that you don't have a moment you know that you also need to to have be supported you know uh, so I think yeah. it's important for you to say, because I think there's a lot of us out there that can, like um, she was saying, that can relate to, you know, being strong and independent, but yet, in, yet still needing, needing people to support us and to, you know, stick behind us, even though we may be getting into things that we don't even know what we're getting into. Like you said, you don't <laughs> need the other side. And, you know, yeah. you have all these ambitions and goals and dreams, but you don't know how you're going to get there yet. Uh, exactly you know so so we got yeah. two more minutes left what would be some of your final thoughts maybe just to share with people who it's you know uh from the from the comments it seems like what you're saying is is relatable to a lot of people and i know it's relatable to me so you know there's a young one of us you know maybe or an older one of us later in life or somebody before us Maybe what were some of the final thoughts that you would leave us on how to get through these transitions and, and you know, just, you know, you've said such words of wisdom. So any, any final thoughts for us? Um, I, I would say one of the most important things is to have this support system and again, to, uh, to go to them and say that you need help mm -hmm. and, and not get frustrated by breaking down. Like I break down a lot. <laughs> And it's okay. <laughs> uh, it's okay to, to break down and uh, like crawl in bed for a couple of days and then go back up and, and continue on one, yeah. one of my assignments. Or like um, book a flight to a place nearby and just enjoy being on a date. Uh, it's okay to do this. You can do, you can do both. Um, another thing is to be flexible towards oh. frustrations <laughs> and towards the change. Um, because, yeah, because I always say I'm going to write something down, and I like that one. 
I need be flexible yeah. towards change. I like. Yeah. I'm write um, uh, yes, yes. I'm, I'm, it's it's not easy to 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 just accept the change. Uh, I believe people tend to like stability and just having this plateau phase where everything is is familiar. But when you when you have this agents of change around you, it's it's puzzling. It's the it's not easy to go through them. So you need to be a bit flexible, especially if you have a goal. Like I'm, I'm a girl who has like, I like to put plans and I like to follow my plans. I really stick to them, but it's not, like almost 90% of my plans didn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but, <laughs> yes, but I ended up in a better place. I ended yeah. up in, in something that I, I didn't plan for, but it's way better. Um, so being flexible would, would help a lot. Uh, in, in in such cases i like that um yes <laughs> um the ma ma mental well-being is important mm -hmm. it's important to care about our mental well-being and keep working on it um when i felt like my um, my my mental well-being is being affected in, in in the pharmaceutical field and that it's affecting who i am it's changing my personality it's changing what i want to do i quit uh, because I felt like um, I'm, I'm not. It's not okay. I, I was having panic attacks. It, it was, it was very harsh. It was a very harsh period. But I, I, I prioritized my mental well-being over my career, over the money, over the position, over everything that I, I was, it, that was there for me at this time. So it's very important to, to, to prioritize our mental well-being, and it's okay to seek help. It's okay to go and seek therapy if. If you need it, yeah, uh, it's it's so normal. It's not only about seeking your support system. It's okay to go to therapy because this is something that is not that accepted in in my region. Mm. Uh, but I feel like it's very important. I feel like like going there and checking with a therapist if if you're not okay and you just need to talk, that's perfectly normal. Right. Yeah, I know. I'm a yeah. big fan of therapy. Too. So we're over just a little bit, guys. But I have one more final question for my beautiful friend and I wanted to read the comments here so we got some comments um of course the uncle said he <laughs> judge but I've never seen a woman as independent as you as my Norha said great point and advice yeah that's what I that was around the time where I was saying be flexible towards change someone else said great point and advice and then you got a heart there. I thought that was a great point too great point and advice so this is on um, the Taryn Lamb show episode number 90 my beautiful friend is calling in from Berlin and we are just a little bit over, but I have one more question for her. What are you curious about? Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a secret sticky. question. I don't tell anyone I'm going to ask them that question. That's a secret question. What are you curious about? Um, I'm curious about what, uh, what tomorrow is hiding for me. Ah, yeah. Currently, I'm going through many changes, as I told you, and I don't have a fixed plan. And um, I'm going through, I'm applying in different places, like for jobs and for programs and for stuff like that. So I'm really curious about tomorrow, uh, what is holding for me. And I'm really excited because yeah. I feel like um, my baggage now is different. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of changes. I have different experience now. I've been through a lot. And... I'm actually curious of how, what my next decision would be regarding the next change. I'm curious. So I'm going to end it with that. We're going to have you back on in a little bit. And maybe next year, I'm curious to see what the answer to this question is later. <laughs> um, we are going to let everybody go. I love this question, too. So we got love this question because I always ask people, what are they curious about? Um, I'm not, I don't know if I'm saying, is it Omnia? Says I love you. Um, so yeah, yes. Yeah. Says so I love my mother. <laughs> um, this is the Taryn Lamb Show, episode number ninety, with my beautiful friend calling in from Berlin, Norheim. Thank you so much for thank you me today. I wish you a blessed Ramadan, and I am going to talk to you soon via some method. Yes. We can. We know how to. Um, uh, we waiting for that. Uh, Instagram. Talk to each other now. <laughs> yes, I, I just want to thank you in the end. I really enjoyed the talk and um, 
it was it charged me with positive vibes so uh, thank you so much and thank you so much for being so beautiful and supportive and helping others no beautiful friend all the thanks goes back to you <laughs> thank you it was my pleasure be good to yourself and each other everyone this is the Taryn Lamp show and I will see you back here on the next show. This is episode number 90. Thank you so much for supporting everyone. Please make sure you're liking, following, subscribing, sharing, and come back for another episode. Be well.